If you get your views from television news, you'll only hear stories that corporations choose. You'll only get to see what they want you to see. You're gonna have to read and decide what you believe. We all watched in horror 911. The planes hit the towers and the towers came down. Did you ever wonder? How they fell so fast well maybe that's a question that we're not supposed to ask don't you think it's strange there were no fighter jets did someone give the order not to intercept and if they really scrambled, then why'd they fly so slow? Maybe there's an answer that we don't want to know. And where was our president, George W. That fool? He was visiting with children at an elementary school. And when he heard the news, he didn't seem concerned. He just calmly read a picture book while all those people burned. Bushes and Bin Laden's. Now what's that all about? While all of us were grounded, they flew his family out. Osama got his training from the CIA. Our soldiers took Afghanistan, they let him slip away. A new Pearl Harbor was their big chance to launch two wars that they'd planned in advance. Now we know they lied about weapons in Iraq. Did they allow the 9-11 attack? Get your views from television news. You'll only hear stories that corporations choose. You'll only get to see what they want you to see. You're gonna have to read and decide what you believe. Okay, that was a good one. You're going to have to read and decide what you believe. That's John Kellerman and uh, the song by John Kellerman and the uh, video by James Rathall. And uh, anyway, <laughs> they're having fun in the control room. Uh, by the way, John Kellerman and his wife were performing some of their new protest songs or it's it's the best version of protest songs I've heard since you know Dylan used to do the protests in the 60s uh, 
and he was performing them on the uh, Jim Rathall TV set show, which is every other Sunday at 8 p.m. or 7 p.m. I I do the show, I should know, but anyway, <clears throat> you might check into that, watch your programming guide. And speaking of programming guide, remember uh, last time I was talking about the show 9-11, the science of 9-11? And uh, I, I forgot to play the... Uh, the announcement of the times and it played four times since the last show to now and uh anyway so th it will be played again as a filler I'll, I'll try to get it played some more if you missed it it's on the it's on the internet now um this is the second show from the end of the year second to last show of the year and uh i think on the next show we'll be summing up as briefly as we can, why we think 9-11 was an inside job. We'll, we'll cover the science, the, uh, <clears throat> in other words, the physics, the, then the discovered evidence, the testimony, eyewitness testimony, uh, the cover-up. We'll cover testimony from officials that would tell you how an investigation should have been done instead and so on like that. We'll try to tie it up in a show that you could show somebody that is unfamiliar and speaking of unfamiliar, you know, there are a lot of kids, a lot of people that were not born when 9-11 happened or were born shortly before. And uh, they're just getting to a cognitive age where they might be understanding a lot of things. And, uh, you know, we kind of take it for granted that we know 9-11 was an inside job. For years, it's been pretty much understood. And... Yet there's still a tremendous amount of people that know exactly, or that believe exactly the official story. But I've got a sticker on the side of my truck that's just like this, uh, this shirt, but that I'm not wearing because it's kind of chilly out. I just didn't want to take the time to put on that T-shirt, so there it is in the corner. But uh, I have a sticker that says 9/11 was an inside job on my truck, and I was driving past a bunch of kids that were in a park where I take my dog sometimes, and. Uh, one of the kids, you know, looked over and saw the truck, and then he shouts, "Hey, 9/11 was an inside job!" And then they, a crowd of them, put their thumbs up. You know, that's the way the kids are now. They understand. Well, it's important for them to understand, and um, that kind of brings me to what I'm going to do for the first part of this show. Uh, a a tr kind of a tragic thing happened just in the last couple days, on the 29th of last month, which is what just four days ago or so. Um, Patrice O'Neill died at the age of 41. He's a comedian and movie star. And I didn't really know very much about him, but I've seen him in a lot of stuff, and I just love his work. I, he cracks me up all the time. And uh, I didn't even know. I, you know, even though I'm a fan of Alex Jones, I don't watch every single thing he does. And In fact, I don't tune in that often. I catch the highlights sometimes. But in 2010... Alex Jones did an interview with Patrice O'Neill um, where, I mean, Patrice O'Neill had evidently evolved to an understanding about 9-11 by watching some of the Alex Jones stuff. And uh, anyway, so I'm going to do this as kind of a tribute to Patrice O'Neill. But before I go any further, I want to say something really derogatory about YouTube and that is that they're cracking down without justification on millions of websites. They've got an automatic machine that's, you know, checking out the content of your video and automatically quarantining videos. I've got over half of my videos quarantined because I'm a video jockey. I'm not a journalist. None of this stuff is original from me. I'm a video jockey. That's it. And it, without being able to video jockey, I don't have a heck of a lot of show. Uh, and basically, I'm doing the video jockey part for people that don't have computer access, which is still an awful lot of people. They got barely got cable access to this show. Um, so, you know, and then I'm getting threatening emails from, you know, YouTube threatening to delete all of my videos and on and on. It, it's I, I would say that everybody out there that might hear my show, if you're a person who regularly or even intermittently posts videos to YouTube, post a video that says YouTube is a dirty, rotten rat fink or something like that. I don't know what to say, but 
you know, complain about this automatic categorization of, you know, illegality. For the most part, every single sh link that I show on my show, we have permission to run. Alex Jones, for instance, is the clip I'll be running on this one. And they might ban my video for using Alex Jones. Remember, YouTube just changed its upload page so that you have to go down and uncheck the box that says, you know, where it's talking about copyright. It says standard YouTube copyright. You got to go down and uncheck that box and check the box below it that says, you know, free for people to use. Because the YouTube copyright is very tight and that's what they're using. If people just upload their stuff and leave that YouTube copyright, if anybody else uses your stuff, they can be banned or, or whatever. I don't know what the penalties can be, but anyway, um, I'm just beginning to experience some of the nonsense that Alex Jones has been experiencing for years. But without further ado, let's go ahead and by this time they've got the cabling switched and everything in there and I'm going to go ahead and start up the uh, Patrice O'Neill interview with Alex Jones in about 10 minutes it'll end after about 10 minutes the part one. There's four parts but I'm only going to play part one and two and part two I have to edit out a little bit of commercialism where Alex Jones sells a lot of stuff. So, because we don't we don't do that on cable access. So, okay, are we ready? Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and and start this Patrice O'Neill with Alex Jones in 2010. the 10th anniversary or 9th anniversary uh, of the 9-11 attacks. I'm going to get into the economy, incredible police state developments uh, as well. But uh, in this first hour, Patrice O'Neill is in studio with us. He's a very successful stand-up comedian, radio personality, and actor. He's been on a number of comedy specials, Showtime, HBO, Comedy Central Presents, in addition to a guest appearance on television shows such as The Late Night with David Letterman, uh, and on and on. And Ellen DeGeneres show, The Office, his stand-up comedy focuses on topics such as American politics, uh, race and race relations, sexuality and censorship. He is also a regular visitor of the Open and Anthony program on XM Radio. Patrice is currently on tour and will be performing this Friday and Saturday night here in Austin, Texas, where we're based at the Cap City Comedy Club. So if it isn't already sold out, uh, you can probably get down there and see him tonight and tomorrow. Patrice O'Neill, good to have you here in studio with us. Thank you, sir. It's awesome. It's good to have you here. I mean, I had seen you on television a few times before, but then I had seen some clips and heard some clips of you on the opening and Anthony show that reaches millions and millions of people. And you were, uh, you know, uh, very early on, right when the Obama deception came out, when Obama was still like God, you were saying people need to see this Obama deception. And you were saying, you were saying, hey, you know, this shatters the left-right paradigm. And they were saying, what, Patrice, you support Bush? They, look, you can't. I think. I think there's an instinct. Uh, to people who who believe in new world order and globalization is an instinct. You don't have to be informed to have that instinct. It's like when I first saw a after the family came out, I had a heartwarming feeling just to see the black family come out. And you go, wow, man, I can't. I'm alive to see that. But then they see the faces, and you see these these <sighs> faces, and you go, and you go, man, something's wrong. Like you just have an instinct, like, what, what, why am I not as happy as I should be right now? That's the that's the the new world order instinct. Then you go and you find certain things out. So I was uh, actually, I think I was on uh, like 50cent.com. Uh, 50cent.com. 50 Cent has his his. Uh, this is 50. Uh, so. You had a, it had a, the Obama deception thing right there as I'm watching some some something on 50, and I looked at it, man, and I'm like, uh, I'm like, I can't be an honest human being if I if I don't feel like this is touching on something, and and I had the instinct that of, of all of that, but.